permission, should you choose to accept it, is to design a device for the storage and rapid relocation of everyone's favorite starchy snack, potatoes. You will be evaluated on the following specifications. Speed. These spuds need to be fast. Range. We need these tubers to go far. Accuracy. Can you relocate a potato to a specific location? Noise. How efficient is your design? How stealthily can it move that potato? Style. Does your device look cool? You have 24 hours to report back. Do not let us down. Please dispose of this message to keep the number of those privy to its contents at a minimum. Good morning, engineers. And welcome to the Science Bros. I'm Dante. And I'm Mike. Today, we're gonna to be working on a really cool challenge. As you guys saw last night, we got some letters and we have a particular challenge to build the best spud guns that we can. So uh, this is going to be a very interesting one, I feel like. Yeah, there's not a whole lot of constraints, so we can definitely go in some interesting directions. Yeah, there's, there's, a lot of, there's a lot of room for creativity that we can kind of play around with, and I'm really excited for that. We're going to be able to kind of just sit there and make what we want to make and see how it all works out in the range. And also, we were given this last night, so we basically had no time to do any mm -hmm. sort of planning whatsoever. So this is all on the fly. We have to gather all of our materials today, mm -hmm. So it's gonna be uh, it's gonna be interesting. Yep, it's gonna be we're gonna be on a tight schedule, which we're not really used to working with, as you yeah. guys uh, might have seen based on how long it took us to get that rocket built. But uh, yeah, it's gonna be a little bit different for us today, guys. All right, let's All do right. it. Woo! So, at 9 a.m. on the dot, we're going to have to leave Kathan's house right here. And uh, it's 8.56 at the moment. So we're pretty close. All right, so at 9.30, we have to leave our houses, and that's when we have to go to the stores. So yes. I got Lowe's first, Mike's going to Home Depot, then we're going to switch, have 30 minutes at the stores, switch back, and then we're going to be back at our houses for the remainder of the morning to start working on the projects, doing assembly and gluing everything together. Yep, we have a couple hours to work, and then we have lunch. Yep, we're going to meet back together for lunch for a little bit. Then after that, uh, we're going to have a few more hours to kind of finalize everything, get everything, you know, looking good mm -hmm. for the aesthetics. And then after that, at 5 o'clock, we need to be parked at our friend Luke's house at the range so that we can test these babies out. All right, I'm going to go ahead and get in my car. It's 857. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to have my car in gear. Yeah, same here. All right, see you, Mike. Good luck. All right, good luck, gamer. And it's 9 o'clock on the dot, and so we are off. All right, so. All right, guys. Three inch combustion chamber. Pneumatic. I'm going with combustion. That's just me. I like the boom. I need to find out a way to ignite it and what fuel to use. Those are the main two things. So over here, this is my last resort. It's just a end of a blowtorch. So you could open it, release some gas into the chamber, make sure however it's in the chamber that it's just sealed and then that'll light it like it lights up a torch. It will depend on how far down the neck it lights. That is pretty far down. I don't know if that's gonna work. That's last resort. I'm gonna buy a lighter and try and use a piezo, I think, um, since we don't have a lantern lighter. Other than that, it's gonna be standard, um, like three inch combustion chamber. A longer barrel will mean faster. Because one of the conditions is speed, I'm gonna go for a little bit longer of a barrel. It might be a little bit louder, but I think I want to win the speed category more. It'll also, and obviously, because it's faster, that means more range. So 
That's two for the books right there. I know that Mike and I, and actually Luke as well, have built a spud gun before, and it was powered by uh, butane, so it was explosive power. But I want to go in kind of a different direction, and I'm going to go with one that's going to be pneumatic, which is compressed air. So there's a couple different directions that I can go with that, and most of it is going to come down to what I can find at Lowe's and what I can put together in a day. It's really tightly time constrained, which I'm just not used to working under, but I think that I can still get a really good product out, so I'm really excited to see how this all turns out. This is what I'm gonna be cutting with mostly, um, it's just a miter saw. Obviously got the angle grinder. We'll be set with tools, I think. Will the spark be long? It honestly depends on the fuel air mixture inside the chamber. If it's if it's mixed evenly and there's enough fuel, it should be enough. But that is a thing to consider. The spark of this is probably about down the neck about here. So for this to work as an ignition, we'd have to have the gas um, going into the chamber as I ignite it. And then that'll, if I fill the chamber and then ignite it, that'll ignite the rest of it inside the chamber and then I'll have to turn it off after I ignite it. Also, this would add a coolness factor because if this was just sticking out the back of the chamber, you could kind of hold it like a gun. Speaking of aesthetics, I do have some paint. So I have white. I don't think we'll need that. I've got black, purple, blue, green. So we can do something with that. No bright colors, unfortunately, and no orange, so can't even do Science Bros orange, but um, I think we'll be good. All right, guys, so I'm trying to think of what designs I want to go with, just because I know that I have some spray paint here. So we have some red, we already have some gray, and some black spray paint as well, so I think I'm going to use these. That actually should be all the colors that I need. I'm going to try to go with the Science Bros logo on the, on the spud gun. I think that I can pull that off if I can cut out the stencil. Yeah, I'm just excited to um, go get shopping because I have no idea what this kind of PVC the stores will have. If they have bigger PVC, I am totally down to get a um, bigger combustion chamber. I need to do some looking up on an uh, engineering toolbox, though. So see which um, fuel I should go with. This, uh, this fuel is propane. Um, it's good for uh, outdoor use. In the past, I've used butane. I don't think they sell hydrogen. <laughs> hydrogen would be very, very active. I'm also gonna be doing some tests with each fuel, I think. So I think I'm gonna buy some butane and I'll see what other stuff they have. And then when we get back, we can test it and see which one makes the bigger boom, basically. And that leads us to our last thing, is sealing anything we have connected to the combustion chamber, because we wanna lose as little pressure as possible to anything besides the potato being ejected, relocated, you could say. We, ha we could either buy some sort of flex seal, plumber's glue, epoxy. We do have super glue. I don't know how well that is at sealing. I think one of the best options we're going to have is either flex seal or epoxy. Epoxy is very strong. We could always do epoxy and flex seal on top if we really want a tight seal because we want all of that pressure pushing the potato out and that'll get us the fastest velocity and it'll get us the longest range. So I think right now that what I can do is I can go with a design that has two pressure chambers, each one of which would be two or maybe two and a half inches in diameter. I don't really know what barrel size I'm going to go with. There's advantages and cost each one because in engineering there's always a trade-off, of course. So currently, I think that what I want to do is I want to go with like a two and a half inch, maybe a three inch pressure chamber and maybe two of those. Use end caps to seal it off and then a bicycle Schrader valve to be able to pump air over. It's 9.30 so we're heading out. Home Depot! Okay, we're going to Home Depot! Going to Home Depot. All right, guys, so we're heading out to Lowe's. Uh, we're gonna go to Lowe's, that's our first stop. We're gonna pick up some stuff, and mostly at Lowe's the first time. I'm just gonna be pricing stuff, trying to figure out which technique is gonna be the best to go with. And once I know what's gonna be the cheapest and most reliable, uh, I'm gonna finally be able to settle down on a design and start buying products. So one of the trade-offs that I have to think about is with a pneumatic cannon, the, res the main restriction in the design is how quickly air can get through whatever valve you use. So the idea is that you basically have a pressure chamber that you're going to pump up to like 60-ish PSI, maybe up to 75 or 80, and then you have to have a quick release valve, and then that valve, when it's open, lets air rush past it, and then go down the barrel and hopefully propel your potato down the barrel. 
But that valve is the main restriction point in the design because that's the most limiting factor for how fast air can get past. So I'm hoping that I can find some two inch PVC twist valves. And if I can extend one of those out to get a longer handle so you get more torque on it, I should be able to crank it faster so I can get the spud to go faster. So my main priority at this trip is what he's got right there. And also fuel. And ignition system. So basically everything. Mike, please call 420. Mike and delivery is 420. I don't know about that one. Cell so four. So two inch, one inch. Let's see what fittings I can get. Fittings might be cheaper at Home Depot, so I have to check there as well. I don't see valves, and that's the thing that I'm concerned about. So that has that type of end, which will be a little bit difficult. However, it's fine. Like I said, the valve is going to be the limiting factor here. Oh, there we go. Four-ish, two-inch. Sure. Okay. That fits on good. So I currently have a slip to convert between the two inch chamber and the one inch barrel. I still need to find a valve, and I'm kind of concerned about what valve mechanism I can use, because they don't seem to have any PVC valves here. The threaded cap would be better than just the slip-on cap, the slip-on cap has a way better chance to push off. So we have a threaded cap, we just need to get an actual threaded pipe. I hope they have four inch PVC at Lowe's, because I'm buying this stuff. but we are out of the store and it is 9.58 so we made it all right guys so it looks like they don't sell the ball valves in stock in a large enough size for me in normal pvc ball valves they have the cpvc so chlorinated polyvinyl chloride and those are generally designed to handle higher pressures and they can deal with higher temperatures but the disadvantage is that the sizing is a little bit different so it's going to be a lot harder to find what I want and to find the adapters that I need to transition between the two. So what I might end up needing to do is I might need to change one of the sizings of the adapters so that basically by just drilling it out to the right size that I need. But I'm not super positive that I can do that or that I have the tools. So I'm not super excited in doing that, but I'll try my best. Home Depot. Oh, we're turning. Yeah. One inch slip. There we go. That's pretty quick. 150 PSI rated. Let's go, baby. We're looking so at. this one will actually fit the pipes that we wanted to use today. The other one is for CPVC, which, like I said, in the car has a different sizing convention, is I think what it's called. Mm -hmm. So it, I'm guessing that its interior diameter of the valve is one inch. This one fits around the outside of a pipe whose interior diameter is one inch. So this is probably like one and a quarter, between one and a quarter and one and a half inches, I'm guessing. Um, so it fits around one inch pipe, basically. Yeah, I think that this might be the way to go. So uh, what are the what are the issues that are happening here? Okay, so the valve is going to be the main point of the restriction, and it's going to depend on like how quickly you can get the valve open and shoot it. And I think that on the one inch valve, I can turn that pretty quickly and pretty smoothly. And it's relatively large because this is roughly the same interior diameter as the actual barrel versus the two inch valve, which as you can see is just massive. So the two inch valve ugh, is a lot stiffer though. So you could hold it and then it would be like this and you'd have to twist it, but it's a lot harder to twist. It's twice the cost, but there's also no restriction there at all. It means that your potato can go a lot faster because there's no, not as much restriction for the air to come out. I've been looking at pipes. They have seen no wire selection. They still don't have any of this stuff in the good um, diameter. So this is Schedule 40, 280 PSI rated. This stuff is still a cell core, but it says Schedule 40. Schedule 40 is the pressure rating. So what I might do is just grab this and then just wrap it in some tape in case it blows. And that way, if it blows, it'll be fine. It will be fine. And this is exactly what I need. We do have an adapter for four inch, two inch, and this is four inch. So we should be good and we can always come back. 
and I have the PVC glue or cement and primer right here. I think this is what we're getting here. Oh, perfect. All right, on it. Let's get back to the car. There we go. Oh, oh, oh God. Oh, this won't come off. Oh, hey. Okay. Okay, so that goes there. So that's what I was worried about with this one. I got this piece, but they'll both fit over here. This will be glued on here, screwed in, and then this will connect to the chamber, which is a very large chamber, I might add. So it looks kind of traditional. I'm a sucker for tradition, so. All right, we're back at Lowe's, organizing the final piece after getting a price and item availability comparison at Home Depot. Okay, so that works. I need a second two inch end cap. So two caps, I need two 90 degree two inch elbows. Is that Kathan's car? That's Kathan's car. Yo, that was actually Kathan's car. We're pulling back around. Hello? Excuse me, who is this? The window? I'm gonna move my window up. Look who we found! <laughs> oh, hold on. I gotta, I gotta flex on him. Hey guys, I hope you guys really enjoyed that shopping spree that we got to go on there. I'm really excited to start putting my stuff together, uh, getting my final product out there, and I am most excited to test it. I think I got a really good design. I'm just hoping that it doesn't break and blow up. But. Yeah, uh, when I was shopping, I had a little bit of trouble finding parts, um, but out of all the stuff I got, uh, I think it'll I think it'll work. And I think it'll do well, and um, I just can't wait to get it built and uh, continue for the testing. Uh, so be sure to like this video and hit subscribe and turn that little bell icon share it with your friends And we'll see you in the next video for the construction and the testing. See you next time